Here's what's going to happen. They're going to now share Jerusalem because they have a pseudo two-state solution, and without disturbing the Dome of the Rock on the Temple Mount, here's a superimposed graphic of what the temple could look like were it to be rebuilt. And by the way, it's believed that this is the exact site of the temple, which it has to be rebuilt on the exact site, and that the Jews could indeed rebuild their temple and not disturb the Dome of the Rock. And this is when all of the world religions come, come together under the rule and reign of this Antichrist. And even now in Jerusalem, you have the three major religions worshiping on three different days. Friday is Islam. Saturday, Shabbat, or the Jewish uh, Sabbath. And then Sunday is the, of course, uh, Christian first day of the week uh, celebration. So you have Islam, uh, Judaism, and Christianity. Now, he's going to bring them all together, and they're all going to be able to worship whatever God they want, apparently. But apparently, he's going to, at three and a half years, at the, at the midpoint, demand that he be worshipped. See, Satan has always wanted to be worshipped. That's why he was cast out of heaven, because he wanted to ascend his throne above the Most High. Why? So he could be worshipped. So he's going to seemingly solve this problem, and then you'll have this two-state solution, Jews and Palestinians living side by side in peace and security. It's interesting that the Apostle Paul, writing to the Thessalonian church in his first letter, chapter 5, verse 3, said basically this, I'll paraphrase, when they start using two words, peace and security, sudden destruction will come upon them like a woman in labor. 9-11, uh, when President George W. Bush addressed the nation after the attacks on the nation, he made this statement using those two exact words. Peace and safety, peace and security. In the original Greek of the New Testament, it's, it's the Greek word asphalia, which can be translated security or safety. And it's really peace in the Middle East and homeland security. So that's the, the clarion call. It's, it's, the, it, it's what they're craving, and the Antichrist will seemingly satisfy them with this solving it, with this two-state solution. There's an interesting prophecy one chapter earlier in Daniel chapter 8, verses 23 through 25. He says, And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. This is, uh, uh, actually it says NIV on the screen, it's K uh, King James. But uh, again, speaking of the Antichrist, And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper, and practice, uh, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his policy also shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify in himself in his heart, and watch this, and by peace shall destroy many." He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, speaking of Jesus, but he shall be broken without hand. In other words, that's the final battle, and the Lord just takes him out. Interesting. He will destroy many by peace. Do you know that in Islam, this is taught by and was actually practiced by Muhammad himself. Make peace with your enemy, then destroy them. Uh, in uh, Islam and in the Palestinian uh, people's, uh, you know, proclamation, they say in Arabic, not English, peace for us means the destruction of Israel. After Muhammad Saladin, make peace with your enemy and then you destroy them. This is why, among other things, I believe Islam will play a significant role in the final one world religion under the rule of the Antichrist. So, not only will he solve the uh, Palestinian problem, as it were, 
Uh, but he'll solve the economic pro- uh, crisis and problem that is just now, I believe, beginning to surface. I, can I say it this way? We ain't seen nothing yet. And please don't be so naive as to believe that the financial crisis that we're experiencing here in the United States is exclusive to the United States. Do you understand with globalization how interwoven all of the world's economies are? If the dollar collapses, so goes the yen, so goes even the euro, and potentially this could usher in, I believe, the one world monetary system, which Revelation 13 says the Antichrist will control, and without this mark, you will neither be able to buy or sell. We've got an economic crisis of biblical proportions, pun intended, that we're facing as a nation, even now. And I see it getting worse. I see it happening very quickly. And the time will come when the nations, all of the nation's uh, economies will collapse. Why else would the whole world agree to and even accept a one-world monetary system. And likely, it will be cashless. So uh, some students of Bible prophecy have done just a remarkable uh, amount of research and study on this, and there is already in place the technology to do this. It's only waiting the Antichrist's unveiling and then the subsequent acceptance of the people in the world. So he'll, you know, solve this. And now we're not going to look at this today because of our obvious time constraints, but Lord willing, uh, maybe next Sunday we can look more at the, uh, the whole financial aspect of how this ties in to his rule uh, over the uh, one world economic system. Now, Uh, It's kind of, I know I don't really want to leave you there. Some of you are looking at me going, you know, well, thanks a lot, you know. Uh, (laughs) It's kind of like somebody saying, hey, you know what? Oh, I can't tell you. uh, You have to wait. (laughs) No, tell me now. No, listen. Um, Well, it's going to get worse. Uh, Watch for the dollar to, uh, you know, fall. Uh, Don't worry. My mother-in-law emailed this to me. I had to share it. Where is your trust? Are you trusting in God? Or are you trusting in mammon? You know, one of these days, I may uh, just uh, do a teaching on Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 34. Because in there, Jesus gives the, the best, bar none, uh, investment advice, and he also gives the cure for worry. Right there, chap- you, can, you can read it, Matthew 6, verses 19 through 34. But I'm reminded of the proverb that says, don't feast your eyes on wealth. Wealth. In other words, don't you know, look at your wealth, don't look at your money, don't put your trust in your money, and don't get too attached to your money, and the Proverbs tells you why. Because it will grow wings and fly away to the heavens. Bye-bye. I think we're seeing that happen now. And I hope for us that it would be a lesson for us that this is not our home, and this is not our hope. And soon and very soon, we will depart in the twinkling of an eye at the sound of the trump, when the dead in Christ rise first, and will forever be with the Lord. Now, does that mean we go run up our credit cards? No, please don't do that. (laughs) Occupy till he comes. Be as ready for his return as if it were today as you would be if it weren't for another 10 years from now. Be watching and be ready 
so his return does not come for you as a thief in the night.